Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about hyperthyroidism. First of all, we all know that thyroid gland actually secretes thyroid hormones that is T3 and T4. I have discussed about the whole thyroid gland and its hormones in my previous video so you can check that out. And these thyroid hormones are very important for various metabolic processes occurring in our body. But sometimes in some cases what happens is there is over secretion of thyroid hormones by the thyroid gland which leads to hyperthyroidism. Okay and hyperthyroidism is actually of two types that is Graves disease and toxic nodular goiter. Now what is the difference between these two? So first of all let's discuss about the Graves disease. Now before going into detail about the Graves disease, first of all you should know that what actually causes the thyroid gland to secrete the thyroid hormone. Normally in normal cases what happens is the hypothalamus actually secretes thyrotropin releasing hormone. And then this TRH hormone acts on the pituitary gland and causes the pituitary gland to secrete the thyroid stimulating hormone that is the TSH. Okay. And this TSH which is released from the pituitary gland actually acts on the thyroid gland and causes the thyroid gland to secrete the thyroid hormone. So this was the normal pathway. What happened till now? The TRH which was released from the hypothalamus acts on the pituitary gland and then the pituitary gland secretes the thyroid stimulating hormone. And after this what happens is this thyroid stimulating hormone which was secreted by the pituitary gland acts on the thyroid gland and in the thyroid gland remember on the surface of the thyroid gland we have various thyroid stimulating hormone receptors okay so on these receptors the TSH basically binds okay and causes and stimulates the thyroid gland to secrete the thyroid hormone so over here remember there are various TSH receptors present on the thyroid gland to which these TSH these hormone basically binds and this hormone binding to the receptors present on the thyroid gland stimulates the thyroid gland to secrete the thyroid hormone. So this was a normal functioning. But what happens in the Graves disease? Remember Graves disease is actually an autoimmune disease very important. As I told you before also that we have various thyroid stimulating hormone receptor present on the surface of the thyroid gland. Okay. But what happens in the Graves disease? As this Graves disease is actually an autoimmune disease. So in the Graves disease what happens is there is formation of various thyroid stimulating antibodies. There is formation of TSAB that means the thyroid stimulating antibodies. Okay, there is development of these type of antibodies or we can say autoantibodies. Okay, and because of such antibodies formation, what will happen? These antibodies actually mimics the activity of thyroid stimulating hormones. Okay, they will act like TSH. And what they will do? They will bind to the thyroid stimulating hormone present on the thyroid gland. And they will cause continuous stimulation of the thyroid gland to secrete more and more amount of thyroid hormone and remember these thyroid stimulating antibodies are actually long acting thyroid stimulator they will continuously stimulate the thyroid gland to secrete more and more thyroid hormones and as because of this hyperthyroidism occurs and over here remember the thyroid hormone is secreted in large amount because of the long acting thyroid stimulator that is the thyroid stimulating antibodies which is formed in the Graves disease and these thyroid stimulating antibodies mimics the activity of TSH thyroid stimulating hormone and they actually bind to the TSH receptors present on the surface of the thyroid gland and they cause continuous stimulation on the thyroid gland and cause the thyroid gland to secrete more and more amount of thyroid hormones leading to hyperthyroidism. Now what are the main symptoms seen in the autoimmune Graves disease? So in the Graves disease the very first thing that is noticed is the marked increment in the BMR. We all know that the thyroid hormones main function is to maintain the basal metabolic rate of our body. But because of the hyper secretion of the thyroid hormone there is marked increment seen in the BMR. And so what will happen? Marked weight loss is seen in the patient despite an increased intake of food. Also there is increased heat production by the body because of the increment in the BMR which leads to discomfort, excessive sweating and a greater intake of water in warm environments. Also over here diffuse goiter is seen in the Graves disease patient. So over here remember diffuse goiter is seen. 
okay and in the toxic nodular goiter okay we will discuss about toxic nodular goiter later in this video only in that various nodules or we can say multi nodules are seen but over here remember in the graves disease there is diffused goiter diffused goiter seen over here and what is goiter goiter refers to the swelling of the thyroid gland so over here in this type of disease there is swelling of the thyroid gland because of the over excess secretion of thyroid hormones also various cardiovascular features and symptoms are seen in the graves disease patient so over here first of all increased pulse rate or sinus tachycardia is seen in the graves disease patient because over here the bmr the basal metabolic rate of the body is increased which is causing the increased pulse rate also arrhythmia especially atrial fibrillation is seen in the graves disease patient neuromuscular features and symptoms basically includes nervousness irritability restlessness psychosis tremors of hand muscular weakness and the exaggerated tendon reflexes also various gastrointestinal features and symptoms are seen in the graves disease patient over here the patient suffers from diarrhea or steatorrhea or vomiting dermatological features and symptoms includes perspiration or increased sweating or hyperhidrosis loss of hair and redness of palm Reproductive features and symptoms includes impotence in males, oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea in females, abortion or infertility in females. Ophthalmological features includes the very important and the commonest symptom that is the exophthalmos. In the Graves disease patient, there is detraction and the lagging of the eyelids and also exophthalmos is seen that means the bulging out of the eyeball. Now next type of hyperthyroidism is the toxic nodular goiter. Now in the toxic nodular goiter there is enlarged thyroid gland seen as you can see over here the size of the gland becomes very large and various nodules are formed on the gland. And as over here you can see there is enlarged mass of the thyroid gland along with various nodules there is increased formation of the thyroid hormones because this mass is this enlarged mass and these nodules are very active in the formation of the thyroid hormones and as because of this they will produce large amount of thyroid hormones resulting into hyperthyroidism. Now one of the reason behind the toxic nodular goiter may be undiagnosed hyperthyroid simple goiter. If the simple goiter which was occurred because of the hyperthyroidism and if it was undiagnosed it will lead to toxic nodular goiter in future. As you can see over here in this picture this patient is suffering from toxic nodular goiter as you can see over here various nodules are observed. Okay, previously if you remember in the Graves disease there was diffused goiter seen and over here there will be nodules observed in the toxic nodular goiter. And remember in the toxic nodular goiter in some patient only single nodule is observed and in some patient multi nodules are observed and the toxic multi nodular goiter will produce very large amount of thyroid hormones. Now if you remember I told you before that if the simple goiter remains undiagnosed it will lead to toxic nodular goiter right but in some cases what happens is the simple goiter is diagnosed okay and if the simple goiter in the patient was occurred because of the iodine deficiency so what will happen the doctor will prescribe the patient about the medicine containing the iodine especially the amiodarone okay the amiodarone is the medicine prescribed by the doctor which contains the iodine. Now what will happen the, the patient will actually now start intaking the iodine containing tablets iodine containing medicines right and so what will happen there will be increased amount of iodine occurring inside the body and because of this increased amount of iodine what will happen the thyroid gland will start forming more and more amount of thyroid hormones which will lead to toxic nodular goiter so this can also be one of the reason behind the toxic nodular goiter also in some cases what happens is if a patient is suffering from simple iodine deficiency goiter and if that patient moves from a country with iodine deficiency to a country with a lot of iodine in their diet it can also turn simple goiter into toxic nodular goiter yes this can also be the reason so in short any type of simple goiter whether hypo or hyperthyroid simple goiter if the simple goiter is not prevented it will lead to toxic nodular goiter so today up till here i hope you understood it well thank you so much